Hannah, you rock. <laughs> now, I don't know um, where it will go after we record. We'll figure that out. I'll figure it out. I'll try and figure it out. So, how's your week been? You know, it's a little crazy, but <laughs> it's good. It's youth it's good. camp. <laughs> it's youth camp. That's exactly it. Gosh. Well, y'all leave today at noon. Yeah, we yeah we leave at lunchtime. So they're finishing up their small group stuff and fixing to go into personal devos, and then we'll do our white final big group stuff. Yeah. Good. So Good. yeah. Great. Well, okay. I guess we just start. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Cool. This is so weird. I know. Yeah. So welcome everybody. We welcome. are live from Somersault on my end and live from York on Hannah's end. So a little different, but exciting. Yes. I think it's going to be fun. And if this works, yeah. this will actually kind of make recording a little easier in the future too. So yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Like I could do this after Evie goes to bed at my house. Well, yeah, same. Yeah, well, I don't have an Evie, but oh, you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I'll put Jakey food to bed. So let's just jump right in. Um, today we're covering all of chapter eleven, and then about it's about half of chapter twelve, I think. Um, yeah, so the first like twenty some, yeah, twenty six. Um, yeah, and if you read it, I am so proud of you because <laughs> it's literally just lists of names. Um, yes. it's not, it doesn't feel super fruitful, <laughs> um, at first glance. So we're going to hopefully be able to explain why it actually is fruitful to read through stuff like this. Um, yeah. and I feel like we've actually in Nehemiah, we've had more of this than I think I realized when we first started the study. I think this is our third yeah. week of like genealogy reports and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's been, I think we've had more genealogy than we've not had genealogy. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's kind of good because when now, I feel like when we kind of all go our separate ways to study the Bible, mm -hmm. we know, even we, if we have to search for it, we know that there is a reason for it. Yes, um, absolutely. Been a good lesson learned in the book of Nehemiah. So, yeah. Okay, so chapter 11 and then into the beginning of chapter 12, basically what we see is the repopulation of the city. So that's what this list of names is. It's all of the groups of people that some of them were volunteered. Some of them were like sought after, like people went out and asked them to come. Um, so that's what this list of names is. And um, it kind of goes over like all of the different roles that these people played as well. Like there were priests, there were the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, mm -hmm. all of these things. So I think the biggest thing that we can take out of this is seeing the need for the people to run God's city, but then also mm -hmm. see the different types of need, like seeing the different areas yeah. of service. Um, yeah. You know, the we couldn't, they couldn't have had a temple with, you know, these experiences of worship and stuff without having the priest, without having the singers, without having people like that. The city wouldn't right. have necessarily been safe without the gatekeepers and things like mm -hmm. that. So I think that's kind of the biggest, I know that's, it's, that's like a very big overview, but it's a very long list. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and I think it's also important to note that like, they weren't just it wasn't just a list of people in their jobs. It was also them moving to the city yes. in a time when land ownership was that was their super wealth. important. That was their wealth. That was how they had financial, like their success or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not only were some of these people, you know, being voluntold to right. go to the city, there were some that were volunteering and to go to the city behind. and leaving their wealth behind. Yes. So I think that's also super important to note in this list of people in the jobs, but these were people that were sac sacrificing everything right. to fully submit to God Absolutely. and yeah. his calling there. I liked how in our book, it actually compared, you know, 
our sacrifice and these people's sacrifice to serve God to Jesus's sacrifice to serve God yeah. you know, and how we are made in the image of God made to live like, to live like Jesus. And Jesus mm -hmm. set that ultimate example of what sacrifice looks like to serve yes. God. Um, Absolutely. So I think that's, I'm glad you brought that up because I completely forgot about that. The, I mean, they left like everything, like their land, yeah animals that's mm -hmm. everything that would have been what they used for income they mm -hmm. left behind um yep. all right let me see what else we've got i think as it kind of goes on into the second chapter of our our book hannah it talks about serving god often involves sacrifice and laying aside our own plans to do what god has called us to do mm -hmm. um you know, the people that went willingly are demonstration for us of what it means to serve God, to humbly follow wherever he leads. Yeah. You know, sometimes what we feel like God's leading us to do is not really where God's leading us to go. And, you know, what it's what we want yeah. and the, the ease and the, that, the kind of a distraction, sorry, I keep moving the table, but it's, it's, it's a distraction. And, you know, sometimes it calls us to step out of our comfort zone and, you know, go where we're not comfortable, where it's going to be a lot of unknowns. These people lost everything that they knew yeah. um, or they choose to walk away from that. And, you know, sometimes, you know, serving God does involve that sacrifice and does involve us walking away from everything that we know and what we're comfortable with to serve him fully and be a hundred percent submitted yeah. to a life for him. Yeah. That's, um, today in my quiet time, I read James chapter four, verse 13 through 17. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's our, our will and God's will. And it talks about how, um, at first, you know, we say today or tomorrow, we will travel to such and such city and spend a year or so mm -hmm. there and do business and make a profit. This is all a self will and not anywhere mm -hmm. in this plan. Did they incorporate like what God might want for them? Um, yeah. it compared it to Satan and Satan's plan because Satan's mm -hmm. plan was all self-centered. And, yeah. and when we, when we're living our life, is our plan a reflection of the plan God wants for us? Or is it in comparison to the plan mm -hmm. Satan had for himself? And that, mm -hmm. when I read that today, I thought, oof, that's, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, and that's, it kind of goes on just to piggyback off what you're saying. It goes on, you know, they also pointed the people of Jerusalem, they pointed us to Jesus himself who humbled himself and became a man. He was born a helpless baby and placed in a lowly manger in Bethlehem. He lived a perfect life. He healed the sick and gave sight to the blind while being ridiculed by religious leaders. He died mm -hmm. on a cross and willingly laid down his life for our salvation. Yep. Jesus emptied himself so we could be filled with eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's the same kind of, that's an example of sacrifice right there. I mean, a hundred percent and what better, yeah. the ultimate, what, what better example do we have to live by? Jesus gave his entire life. God sent his son to die for us because he loved us enough. Even though we are nasty people, he loved us enough to do that. And here we are being selfish with the like, little bit that we have, you like, know, and like that's our, our time today. Like what, instead of thinking, and I don't, we don't have to be like insane. It's not like we wake up and are like, all right, God, show me what to wear today. But like yeah. incorporating, like at least being thoughtful of this is my desire. Is that in alignment with God's desire? Mm -hmm. Like it exactly. may be. And that's, if it is, that's like a win-win, but yeah, you have to at least consider the fact that it might not be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So good. So good. Okay. I think that's, it feels like this one is so fast, but I don't know. Um, that's kind of like the big gist of all of this is the sad yeah. these people made to serve God and then mm -hmm. them being willing to use the gifts and the talents God gave them to create yeah. this community of God's people. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay, let's look at our questions. This the, I'll do the first one. Okay. Read Nehemiah 11, 6, 8, and 14 again. In each of these verses, most translations include the phrase valiant men or men of valor. 
look up the word valiant in the dictionary, record the meaning of the word and how we can be people of valor as we seek to serve God. And I posted that one just a little bit different on our group because I wasn't making y'all go and look up that word because that takes time and effort. And I was helping you out a little bit. So valent is uh, possessing or showing courage or determination. So that was the definition that old Google gave me. And then I think um, for me, when I answered this question, being a person of valor is you know, having the courage and determination to serve the Lord through sacrifice, putting Mm -hmm. having courage to set aside my plans, my desires, Mm -hmm. and instead walking in obedience to the Lord's plan. Because that's not like, that is so much easier said than done. That's not something Mm -hmm. that we just automatically do. Um, Right. For me, at least, it definitely takes courage to walk in essentially the unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I think I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's almost exactly what I had Mm -hmm. um, with mine as as well. Um, You know, standing firm on the word of God, you know, against all odds, they stood, they did what others couldn't, you know, like we had said previously, many other people had tried to rebuild this wall and had failed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they couldn't do that. And then here they are, they never lost faith. They never you know, back down from it. Right. And here they are on this wall is rebuilt. Yeah. All because of the sacrifice and the determination and the courage they had mm-hmm. to step outside of what they thought their day to day. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Read Philippians two, five through 11. What does this tell us about the character and humility of God? How can we display this same spirit in our own lives? Do you have that? I am getting there. Did I say that right? Philippians? I said Philippians, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why in my brain. I thought I just now said Philippians. That's so what I heard in my head. You know, if I can find it. I got it. You want me to read my, it? Go ahead. My my Bible, y'all, it is it is as humid here, and I'm pretty sure we oh, have as much water yeah. from like Noah's Ark time because oh, it's God. it rained and it has been humid. So oh. my Bible pages are sticky and it's, That's yeah, hopeless. it's a mess. Okay, go ahead. There we go. All right. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord the glory to the glory of God the Father. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so how does that, what does that tell us about God's character and the humility of God? And then how can we display that in our own lives? I wrote down that I thought it was kind of crazy how humble Jesus was knowing he was the son of God. Like I think about like being related to certain people or being friends with certain people. And I'm like, I like, I'm proud to be related to my dad or like to have a friend that's doing really well in something like there's pride in that. Mm -hmm. And like, Jesus was so humble that he didn't even consider himself, you know, like, he didn't boast in his position as the son of God. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that's, that's powerful to have that kind of humility. Um, what else did I say? Oh, and then he was exalted because of that humility. Like, yeah, God gave like, I don't know how to explain that, but he was given glory and he was praised for setting aside pride and walking in humility um so yeah that's pretty much what i wrote down and then obviously like displaying that in our own life is i think is you have to be self-aware to be humble like you have to be so self um and we are called to live in the likeness of christ and so 
if that that's so hard because I think I try to be so humble, but if you are not constantly, you know, reminding yourself of your place and I think somebody's here. You got a visitor. <laughs> Or maybe it was the copy machine. I don't know. Anyway, if you're not like constantly bringing yourself back down to earth and recognizing what you are in the grand scheme of things, um, yeah. it can be really easy to kind of climb that ladder of pride. So, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think, I think too, and this was in my Bible and I'm sure it probably came from, I think I've had this since this Bible, since I've been back at Lifeway, but so I'm sure it was a dad, your dad sermon, but um, it was in my notes and it, it's, he saw everybody as a someone, you mm -hmm. know, I think sometimes we kind of put people on this thing and we're, we are guilty of, you know, treating some people better than others in this, but, mm -hmm. you know, he came as a human to die a horrible death that he didn't deserve right. for people who did, right. you know, and, but in that he saw everybody as a somebody yeah. and you know i think that's it, it's humbling it, it that humbles me to yeah. think of the fact that you know jesus came mm -hmm. and died a death that he didn't deserve for people that did deserve it yeah. and all because he loved all of us right and i think that's so it's i mean that's like sobering just to think of it that way we see that in chapter 11 and 12 when we see that every person that showed up had a job you know every person yeah. that showed up had something they had to do because they were someone that mattered and mm -hmm. I, I mean that's so good that is yeah so good. okay last one how may God be asking you to willingly serve him how can you encourage and bless others that willingly serve God with their lives I think, and this is something that I put like really big. Yeah. Um, and if we didn't learn it from Nehemiah, but the first thing is to pray. Yeah. Pray for how God wants you to serve him, how, you know, how you can do better, what you can change in your life, but also praying for other people. Um, praying for those people that are serving as well beside you, because, you know, ministry is hard and that's something that we've talked about here at camp this week that being a Christian and being in ministry is super hard and um you know my granddad was a pastor and something that he told many people that felt a call into ministry is if you can do anything but go into the ministry then to do it yeah but if you cannot then do it with a passion and you know I think you know praying for everybody, praying for all the situations, praying for all the jobs that, you know, we have for people to fill those places because everybody has a place. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think Nehemiah has been a prime example of what prayer can do in yeah. any situation. Yeah. I wrote down prayer and obedience because it's, I think yeah. like I have to constantly Thank goodness the Bible says we can pray for wisdom because that's what I have mm -hmm. to do. Like I'm every single day praying for wisdom that God will show me something or lead me in the right place. Or, you know, like I like straight up don't know. I mean, in most things, I just don't know. Yeah. And knowing that I'm allowed to pray for wisdom and that God freely gives it when we ask for it is huge. Yeah. But I also wrote down obedience because it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if I know if I'm not obedient to it. Um, yeah. That's what I put in here. Like how maybe God asking you to, I might even know how he's asking me to serve, but am I being obedient to him asking? Um, yeah. So that's prayer has been like, so I think Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah has helped me with my relationship with prayer. And just knowing that I can be in prayer literally constantly and yeah, in like ritually, you know, in the mornings and at night before I go to bed, but also spontaneously when I realize like, I, I have to have something here. Like I need guidance in this and yeah, it's just been really good. So, well, and I think it's also important, especially where prayer and obedience 
it's finding that person or people Mm -hmm. group that hold you accountable and encourage you and pray with you, not just, you know, Mm -hmm. you're not in it alone, you know, and that's, that's something I think that we sometimes struggle with is we want to do it on our own. You know, that's part of our sinful nature. We want to fix everything on our own. We want to do it on our own. We try and do it without God. We try and do it without other people. And God created people. We are, we, we like to group together and we need to find that group to encourage and to keep you accountable and to pray with you and to help guide you. And, you know, sometimes wisdom comes in the form of advice from other people. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, we'll have, we should do like a whole separate discussion on like when we pray for wisdom and pray that God speaks to us, like, how do we hear that? How does that look? Because yeah. that's a separate topic, but I think that's, yeah. you know, you, you have, you can even pray that God helps you hear him. Like that's what I yeah. recently is. I'm not just praying for wisdom. I'm praying that you give me wisdom, but you also make it obvious because like, I don't know. Yeah. And like, or give me the ability to hear, like you might be working and you might be telling me something, but I'm not getting it. So like, help me. Yeah. With um, yeah. And I think that would be a really, really good, like just side study to talk about like, yeah, what that can look like. Cause it can come in so many forms. But Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Done. I think um, next week we'll finish chapter 12 mm-hmm. and then we'll do chapter 13 the following. So next week is chapter 12, 27 through 47. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll get questions posted and then we'll only have one more week. We did it, guys. <laughs> We're in the final. St- you have almost read a whole book of the Bible. There you go. Congratulations. Uh, Gosh. All right. Good. Yay. Well, I hope you guys are safe getting home with. We're thanks. We are um definitely wrapping up. God has definitely been moving in these kids' lives. It's been awesome to see and just, you know, yeah. the the goodness. That's why whenever I was posting these questions earlier this week, it was um we had had our first night of worship. And for anybody who's been to youth camp, youth camp worship is a whole different experience. Yeah. Um you know, y'all, y'all probably heard me laughing and joking about youth camp was made for me, but youth camp was absolutely made for me. I love youth camp. Um, so to, to see that and to see, you know, the same faithful God of Nehemiah Mm -hmm. already working in in the kids' lives, like that was, that was a, um, it was a tearjerker. So it's been good. It's been good. I'm so glad. I can't wait to hear all about it. Cannot wait. All right. All right, guys. Well, have I, a good day. I don't know how to end this. <laughs> I know. This is it. This Bye, is guys. It. Okay. Thanks for being here. Bye. All right. I'm going to end this. Bye. I'll text you later. See you later. Bye. All right, bye. <laughs>